All right, welcome back, Ranger fans and Canes fans. We got a very special crossover edition for you guys here today. This is John Chick of Locked On New York Rangers, joined here by Jared Ellis of Locked On Carolina Hurricanes. Uh, Jared, how are we doing today, buddy? I am doing amazing. It is a lovely Sunday afternoon here in Raleigh, sitting out on my porch. Got my liquid death water here, you know, hydrate or dehydrate, but it's a great day. Always important. Yeah. So I, I figure, you know, obviously the, the Canes, they played a little bit earlier today. And for anybody listening to this, uh, for some reference, we are recording this on late Sunday afternoon here, as Jared just mentioned. Uh, you know, Jared, it's interesting because the Canes, you know, they hit a little bit of a rough patch, maybe just a little bit of a slump, but uh, they've obviously found their game pretty quickly here. They've now won four in a row, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, what are you seeing from this team over the last handful of games here? Uh, how have they been able to turn it around as the playoffs rapidly approach here? I would say the big thing and what we've been seeing from this team right now is resilience. They're really dealing with some injuries. Uh, after that game in Colorado, we Jordan Stahl got knocked out in that game. He's obviously back now, but you know you lose your captain. You know even if it's for just one game, that's still a big hit. Frederick Anderson, he's out with injury as of this recording. He's going to be reevaluated at some point this week. By the time this episode goes up, that may be – we may have an answer on that. We just don't know right now. Auntie Ranta left this game against the Islanders this afternoon with a lower body injury. So we're dealing with some injuries right now in a very uh, important position as well uh, in goaltending. But this team, they have really – bounced back and again just been resilient right now uh of supporting Piotr Kochetkov I'm still learning how to pronounce his last name it's a little bit difficult but they're really supporting Piotr and rallying behind him he's won his first two NHL games that he played in he won his debut in New Jersey in overtime and then he came into this game against the Islanders in relief of Antiranta and got the win there as well. Yeah, no, it's great stuff. It's, uh, you know, obviously, I know we were talking right before we started recording. It's nice to see both of our teams playing well with the playoffs, you know, right here. I mean, we're, we're right at the, uh, the finish line as far as the regular season is concerned. Uh, but something that's kind of interesting, you know, the Rangers and Canes, we don't know who's going to win the division yet, although the Canes, by beating the Islanders, uh, they obviously give themselves the inside track. I was kind of hoping, Jared, that, uh, you know, this game would be for first place. Uh, it's not meant to be, but the Canes can clinch the division if they win this game. Uh, the Rangers can stay alive as far as the division is concerned, uh, you know, if they get the win. But I'm wondering, man, like, like how important is the division to you? I mean, it's obviously nice to have home ice advantage and all that, but is this something that you feel that the Canes, you know, really need to get? Obviously, they have a, a great hometown support there uh, in, in rallies. So your thoughts on that? Yeah. Yeah, this is one, like, I can see both sides of the argument for it. Uh, you know, kind of preserve yourselves heading into the playoffs and, you know, of not necessarily giving, you know, everything you have. Like, last year when it came to the President's Trophy race, you know, they kind of preserved themselves a little bit, you know, right there in that last little stretch, and they didn't win it because – because they very well could have won the President's Trophy last year. But for me personally, I think it is important to win the division because, yeah, as of right now, as of this recording, they're guaranteed to have home ice advantage in at least the first round, which is obviously good. But you want to have it as much as you can throughout the playoffs, whether it's first and second round only, uh, first, second, and third round. And then, you know, all the way to the cup final. So for me, it is important because you want ad every advantage you can have, no matter how minimal it may be. And plus, of course, it'd be nice you to there, man. You know, it, it's important. Uh, the one thing I would not do, you know, the Rangers right now, they're dealing with some injuries. Uh, Kako, Cop, and uh, Heedle have all, they all missed the last game. They are all expected back by the time that the playoffs start. I wouldn't, you know, certainly risk injury. It's not like the Rangers, you know, need to win all these last three games to get into the playoffs. They're going to be in there no matter what, and they're going to have home ice in the first round no matter what. It's a delicate balance. You know, if these guys, if you feel like they're ready to go, then by all means throw them out there. But I wouldn't, you know, run them into the ground and, you know, potentially risk a re-injury. 
uh, just to win the division. And, you know, I realize it's great to have home ice advantage, and I think that's especially true with the Rangers being such a young team and, uh, you know, an inexperienced team when it comes to postseason hockey. Obviously, look, Rangers and Canes, they could beat each other in the second round, uh, you know, in a perfect world for both of us. So, um, yeah, it'd be great to have home ice for that. But at the same time, you know, they are four points back now. And I don't think I would, uh, again, you know, risk injury to, to any of the players uh, just in the hopes of chasing down the, the division championship, if that makes sense. Yeah, I, I totally agree there. You know, say Freddie is medically cleared tomorrow on Monday. I don't know if that's when he's getting evaluated or what. But do you want to put him in? Then Tuesday against a team that it's going to be a battle. Uh, these are two of the top teams in the NHL. Do you want to risk that re-injury or say the same thing to Auntie Ranta? Uh, so, yeah, I totally get it. You know, again, you want every advantage you can have, and it'd be nice to have another division championship banner up there. Of course, that would be nice. Yeah. Uh, but, again, you do have to – uh, make the smart decision as well. I'll take that question one step further as well. Cause you know, obviously I was looking at the Kane schedule. They have two games left. The Rangers have three. If the Canes, you know, if they beat the Rangers on Tuesday, then they win the division. The only mm. team that they wouldn't have home ice against in the Eastern conference playoffs would obviously be the Florida Panthers because they just apparently are never going to lose another hockey game. Um, but let's say that, you know, the Canes wrap up the division. They then play, I, I think it's against the devils in their season finale. Mm -hmm. If you're Rod Brindamore, do you rest anybody or do you just keep going pedal to the metal and, and let's just steamroll our way into the playoffs? Any thoughts on that? I say with that, if they clinch on Tuesday, that'd be awesome. Uh, I would say, you know, on Thursday uh, against the Devils, if they feel 100%, let them play. Uh, but if there's even a little question mark there, you know, sit them. Uh, that's what I would do there. I, I would, if they feel ready to go, I would let them play. That makes sense. I mean, I, th I think, you know, the Rangers, they close against the caps and it's possible that the Rangers are locked into their playoff spot by the time that that game rolls around. But then again, you know, you've got a caps team that, you know, they're neck and neck with Pittsburgh right now. And, you know, if they went out, you know, they could pass Pittsburgh and they could be the team playing the Rangers. So I think if the Rangers, you know, even if they are locked into their final spot, as long as you're not risking anybody, uh, you know, re-injuring something that's ailing them, I think the Rangers should go all out against the Capitals. I mean, that's become uh, quite the heated rivalry over these past couple of uh, seasons here. Obviously, all the nonsense with Tom Wilson last year. So I think if I'm the Rangers, I would probably play that game to win it in the season finale, even if they're in a spot where they can't necessarily move up or down. Um, but uh, I figure, Jared, you know, we can let everybody know about Hello Fresh real quick here and then obviously continue to break down this matchup between the Rangers and the Hurricanes. Uh, but yes, today's episode of Locked on Rangers and Locked on Canes is brought to you by Hello Fresh. With Hello Fresh, you get farm fresh, pre portioned ingredients, and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on Hello Fresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. Get far yeah, and well, go ahead, Jared. What do you got? <laughs> yeah, and as someone who you know tends to work a lot of nights and doesn't have a whole lot of time to go grocery shopping, you know, just having this stuff delivered is very, very nice. It's clutch, man. I, I love you know it, just how fast you can prepare the meal. I think is probably my favorite part about it because I don't know about you, man. I'm always scrambling at these 7 p.m. puck drops. I want to get dinner and be ready to watch some Ranger hockey, especially with the season that they're having. So it's really clutch in that regard as well. Yeah, I totally agree there. Your, uh, yeah, the 7 p.m. puck drops, they can be tough for sure. And whenever you have your ingredients there ready to go already, you don't have to go to the grocery store and whatnot, it definitely helps out quite a bit. Yes, sir. And uh, I figure uh, we got to let everybody know about this. Go to HelloFresh.com slash LockedOn16 and use code LockedOn16 for up to 16 free meals and three free gifts. Go to HelloFresh.com slash LockedOn16 and use code LockedOn16 for up to 16 free meals and three free gifts.
So, uh, you know, I, Jared, I, I figure we might as well look at the uh, playoff picture as it currently stands here, because I'm curious about this. You know, if the season ended right now, Rangers are playing the Penguins, and that's been a really nasty matchup all season. Rangers have won three out of four against the Pens. Right now, it looks like the Canes would square off against the Bruins. And I saw a stat the other day. Not only have the Canes won all three of those matchups against the Bruins this season, but they have outscored them like 16 to one in those three games. So, I mean, is that kind of something that you're looking for? You know, Canes, Bruins, bring it on. Is there any team that you'd like to face, a team you don't want to face? Any thoughts on that? You know, just potential matchups here. Yeah, so with that matchup against the Bruins, I personally really like that matchup. I've talked about it multiple times already on my show, and it's one where I feel like the Hurricanes uh, – their experience is showing now because in the previous two playoffs or that they played the Bruins in, you had the 1819 conference final where the hurricanes got swept. And then you had the uh, bubble where, yeah, the hurricanes ended up sweeping uh, the Rangers and that first round qualifying round, whatever you want to call that. And, then they faced the Bruins in the following round and they lost four games to one. So you look at that now. I feel the Hurricanes inexperience was a factor there. And as well as the Bruins were still kind of at the height of their late 2010s run that they were having. And now the Hurricanes are a little bit older, have some more experience under the belt, and the Bruins are an older team. I've said it multiple times, kind of all season long, you kind of are seeing a changing of the guard type thing this season with teams like Pittsburgh, uh, Washington, Boston. They're all playoff teams still, but they used to be like the number one and number two spots in their division. And now Pittsburgh is in the third spot, could end up losing that to Washington. And speaking of Washington, they're a wild card team along with Boston. And it's it's crazy to think about because, you know, those teams were such heavyweights for so long. And I think, you know, if that happens this year, you know, regular season is one thing. It was great to see the Hurricanes dominate the Bruins like that. But. Regular season is one thing. Playoffs is a totally different breed. If they can get over that hump in the playoffs, I think that'll be – it's obviously not going to be like winning the Stanley Cup or anything like that, but I think that'll be a good stepping stone almost or or milestone for the team, you know, because of the Bruins giving them such problems in the playoffs before and to be able to finally knock them out. You know, I think that'd be really, really cool. Yeah, for sure. And uh, it's funny because I remember that series, Jared, obviously the Rangers against the Hurricanes. And, uh, you know, for any Hurricanes fans that are listening to this, I was rooting for the Canes even after they knocked out the Rangers because I didn't need to see the Bruins, you know, go on some kind of a lengthy run. And uh, unfortunately, the Bruins, you know, like you said, the more experienced team at that time. uh, And they, they take out the Hurricanes in the round of 16 or whatever it was called that year, the bubble year of the Stanley Cup playoffs. But yeah, Jared, I think you hit the nail on the head sizing up the, uh, you know, the different teams in the Eastern Conference playoffs. I mean, there's so many compelling storylines this season. You've got, you know, the three teams that you mentioned that are kind of the old guard, uh, the Caps, the Bruins, and the Penguins. They're still in the playoffs. Do And, you know, do any of them have another run left in them? Uh, but then you've got these teams that are kind of newer to the playoffs, like Uh, The Canes and the Panthers, you know, they've both kind of been knocking on the door in recent seasons and might be on the verge of a Stanley Cup run. Uh, Obviously, the Rangers are kind of the team that has overachieved this year, and uh, I don't think too many people thought that they'd be, uh, first of all, even in the playoffs, but then also hosting a a first-round playoff series matchup, even in a worst-case scenario. And then Toronto, I mean, can they win a a playoff series finally? So uh, I can't wait, man. I mean, I'm always excited for the Stanley Cup playoffs but the fact that the Rangers are now back in it and just all these different compelling storylines that are going on right now, it's going to be just absolutely incredible must-see TV, and I plan on watching as much of it as I possibly can. Yeah, I know. Same here. I'm going to watch as much as I can, no matter how much moving around I have to do to watch a game, whether it's at work, at home, or, or what. I mean, I obviously you know, had to 
relocate during this recording. But yeah, this is one of those things that it's going to be a must watch playoff season for sure. Absolutely. And uh, we'll continue kind of breaking this down. We'll get into some predictions, certainly for this game between the Rangers and the Canes. But first, Jared and I, excuse me, Jared and I have to let everybody know that today's episode of Locked On New York Rangers and of Locked On Hurricanes is brought to you by Rock Auto. Save time and money with the ever increasing numbers of makes and models. It is now impossible for your local chain auto parts store to stock all the parts you need. Why endure often pointless? Go ahead. What do you got? Or seemingly intimidating questioning when going to get parts for your car when the folks there, they are behind the counter ordering this stuff on their computer, choosing the only parts that their warehouse happens to carry. You can have access to rockauto.com right now on your phone or on your computer. And North Carolina summers especially get really, really hot. So if your air conditioning is out right now. You're going to want to get that fixed in rockauto.com. That's all the parts you need to get your air conditioning fixed, along with any other issues you may be having. Yes, sir. And Rock Auto is a family business serving do-it-yourselfers for over 20 years, and all their prices are reliably low for every single customer. And go explore their easy-to-use website today to find the solution to your auto part needs. Go to rockauto.com right now and see all the parts available for your car or truck right locked on in their How Did You Hear About Us box so they know we sent you. Amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts that your car will ever need. RockAuto.com. All right, and uh, I figure, you know, Jared, I I wanted to ask you about this as well because we haven't talked, I don't think, since the trade deadline has come and gone this season, and obviously the Canes, you know, they pick up Max Domi. I believe it was a three-team deal that uh, landed him there in rally with you guys. But, um, you know, what were your thoughts on, first of all, the Max Domi trade and and how's he been doing so far uh, with the Canes? How's he been fitting in? Yeah, to be completely honest, I wasn't a fan of the trade. Uh, I felt it, it was one that... I didn't get it, honestly, because not only did they trade for him and he hasn't really been having that great of a season even before here, they didn't ship anyone out. So now rather than having uh, just one forward scratched, you're having two scratched. And outside of today's game against the Islanders and the game against Arizona – He's been meh at best, and at his worst, he's hurt the team more than he's helped it. And I get them wanting their trade deadline acquisition to be playing and producing and all that stuff. I get it, um, but I there have been several occasions where I feel like he should have been the one getting scratched, not Stephen Lawrence and not Derek Stepan. Uh, but in today's game against the Islanders, he played good and he had a goal there. And that's obviously what the Hurricanes are wanting out of him. And he had his hundredth career one against Arizona a few days ago. But it, it's one that I I'm still struggling to figure out. And I know a lot of folks, they don't always want to hear that. You know, they want to hear folks, you know, raving about trade deadline acquisition and just how good they're doing and blah, blah, blah. But this one, I, I don't get it. You know, this was not a Brady Shea trade deadline, a Vincent Trocheck trade deadline. It, it wasn't a, one of those. Moves. This is a bit of a head scratcher, honestly. Yeah, and just to kind of build on that, I mean, you know, Domi, questionable trade aside here, do you wish they had done more than just the one move? Because that was pretty much it as far as uh, their action. And I don't know, man, watching the Canes over the years, these last couple of years, they just seem to get better and better. And I thought this might be kind of like they're all in season where it's like, dude, let's just like deal draft picks, let's deal prospects, let's bring in some guys that can help us, and let's win the cup this season. I mean, were you kind of at that point, and did you think that maybe they could take that approach this year at the deadline? Yeah, I honestly, with at the trade deadline, I didn't expect them to go out and get, to be honest, you know, 
with their roster they have right now, a third or fourth liner. Max, I mean, he's majority of his playing has been on the fourth line. Uh, I expect them, if they're to do anything, to either go out and get a legit goal scorer uh, and, you know, someone that could maybe, you know, bump someone down in the lineup, honestly, uh, and really, you know, go out there and score a bunch of goals because, you know, it's really since the beginning of March, the Hurricanes uh, offense has been kind of hit and miss sometimes. You know, there will be games where they go off, but then there will also be games where they can't get anything going at all. And so that was one move I could see them making or could have seen them making. Not one that I necessarily thought they had to do because you look at the team right now, they have five guys with 20 plus goals this season. So it's not that they can't score at all. That isn't necessarily a problem, but it was one of those, you know, getting into playoffs, you want you know, as much firepower as you can have. And then on um, the only other thing I really could see him doing is maybe kind of bolster the bottom pairing on their defense. Uh, Cause I think Ian Cole's been good, not great, but good. And they kind of, have cycled uh, Ethan Bear and Brendan Smith in and out of the lineup. Uh, since Brendan Smith came back from his injury, uh, I think he's been far and away the better defenseman over Ethan Bear. But that's still you're you're flip flopping these two guys. You want you know, all right, this is the pairing we're rolling with. Not all right, are we going with this guy or that guy? So I thought they may have done one of those, but it wasn't necessarily a trade deadline where I thought they absolutely had to do this. But this honestly felt like a trade for the sake of making a trade, honestly. It, it wasn't one of those where, like, this is a better team now. It raised more questions than answers. Yeah, he's had kind of a weird career trajectory because as recently as, like, I think it was like three years ago, he had a really big season – but then he kind of just tapered off just as quickly and just has never really hit that next level that you're, you're certainly looking for him to get to. Um, but, you know, with the Rangers, you know, I, I've been saying it on my podcast, but I feel like they've been like the winners of the trade deadline season. I mean, the fact that they got Frank Vetrano from the Panthers for just a fourth round draft pick, which is weird in, a, in and of itself because the Panthers and Rangers are both you know, buyers this year, you don't really expect them to strike a deal, you know, between the two of them, but uh, Vetrano, you know, he's gotten a chance to play with Mika and with Kreider. He's really taken advantage of it. Uh, he's got a heck of a shot and Andrew Kopp. I mean, he got injured uh, in the same game against the Islanders in which he had a natural hat trick in the first period, which was crazy. Uh, him and yeah. Panarin have just been in lockstep ever since he came over. Uh, he's fit this team like a glove and uh, when we saw that he, you know, was out of the game with a lower body injury, Ranger fans were very, very nervous because this guy has been a godsend. I mean, he has points, I think, in 13 of the 15 games that he's played so far with the New York Rangers. And, you know, he's always been a, a solid all-around player, but he's taken, you know, as far as points, he's taken his game to a whole nother level. Uh, you know, Tyler Mott's injured, won't be back unless the Rangers make a, uh, you know, fairly deep playoff run, questionable hit by the Penguins uh, that took him out of the lineup. And, um, you know, it's interesting, Jared, because you mentioned the third line and still kind of trying to figure that out. I feel like the Rangers, it's kind of the same deal because they traded for Justin Braun at the deadline as well. And, you know, I like Braun. It's a good depth piece. But I was afraid that, you know, Braden Schneider was going to have to come out of the lineup. And, you know, Schneider's a 20-year-old, and uh, he's done great for a rookie, you know, seeing his first taste of NHL action this season. And so there's kind of a situation where between Braun and Schneider and Patrick Nemeth, it's like three guys for two spots. I think Schneider has kind of solidified his spot in the lineup, but it's going to come down right to the wire, um, you know, between Braun and, and Nemeth. I wouldn't be surprised to see either one of them as kind of the sixth defenseman in the lineup. But, you know, it's crazy to think, you know, he, as good as these teams have been this season that, you know, there's still kind of some position battles going on and guys can kind of still work their way up and down the lineup. I mean, is there anything like that going on with the Canes as far as guys, you know, trying to stake their claim to the top six or the top four yeah. the defensemen or anything like that? Yeah, I, I would say top six wise, really the only thing you see changing there is occasionally Max Domi slotting in up there. Uh, but for the most part, he's pretty much been on the fourth line because I actually totally misspoke there earlier when I said Domi being a third or fourth liner because our third line 
has been far and away our best line all season long. And you'll like this because it's the line of Nino Niederreiter, Jordan Stahl, and Jesper Faust, uh, Faust. your former uh, Ranger there. That line has been absolutely insane this year. Uh, so Domi kind of slotting in there on either the second line or the fourth line. But yeah, there's uh, definitely some position battles, mainly on the fourth line, because that's when you'll see, you know, whether or not Max Domi is going to be there. Uh, Stephen Lawrence, Derek Stepan, those three guys kind of cycling in and out. Uh, right now, it's just uh, two guys there. Uh, it'll either be because, I uh, guess, Spirit Kotanyemi, He's out again with injury due to a questionable hit because uh, that was another injury I forgot to mention earlier as well because he's another guy that's out. And then, as I mentioned, that bottom defensive pairing of whether or not it'll be Ethan Bear or Brendan Smith because they tried the uh, Ethan Bear and Brendan Smith pairing once a few games ago and they scratched Ian Cole. That did not work at all i know i don't want to be like too negative but that was a bad pair ian cole needs to be out there for sure but yeah there's definitely still some of those position battles and i don't necessarily think it's like a position battle in the traditional sense it's you know guys being able to stay fresh and being able to stay sharp uh but it is definitely kind of interesting because you have a guy like Derek Stepan, who, for the most part, whenever he's been in the lineup, I think he's been really, really good. And he's definitely been one like, why are you scratching him? He just played previous game, and he played awesome. Yeah. Or there's been the same thing with Stephen Lawrence as well. Uh, but they know more than I do, so – yeah, I'm glad to hear that about Derek Stepan, man. He was always one of my personal favorites on the Rangers. And, uh, you know, I know you got about 10 former New York Rangers there. But, man, I, I want to see him in the lineup. Or maybe I don't because, actually, if the Rangers and Canes play each other in the second round, uh, I guarantee you Derek Stepan is going to do something big in that series. He was always a uh, big-time playoff performer for the Rangers for sure. Yeah, he's definitely been a very welcomed addition here on the team this year, really adding some veteran presence Uh just a really good blend of guys that have been around for a long time, as well as our young guys as well. I think the Hurricanes have a really good blend this year, and I think that's been what's really helped them out this year. They got a yep. good blend of guys. They got you know rookies out there like Seth Jarvis, who's 20 years old, they absolutely killing it. You got guys like Jordan Stahl, Derek Stepan, Ian Cole that have been around for forever and a day. And then guys that are kind of just inching to their prime or in their prime with guys like uh, Jacob Slavin, Brady Shea, Sebastian Aho, Andre Special. They got a really good blend going on this year. And actually, uh, with their win against the Islanders today, they tied the franchise record for points in a single season. And uh, I figure we can end with this, man. It's been a ton of talk, a ton of fun, excuse me, talking hockey as always, man. But uh you know, obviously, Rangers and Canes going to be playing each other here on uh, Tuesday night. Yeah, have a prediction you want to toss out for this game as far as, you know, a final score or anybody to have a big night for the Canes, anything along those lines? I think with this game, I honestly see our captain having a big game. He's heating up just in time for the playoffs. Uh, he's had... I think nine goals in his last eight, including today. If I remember, either nine or ten goals in his last eight games. And he's really heating up in time for the playoffs, so I expect him to continue that trajectory that he's on right now. I could see Sebastian Otto obviously going up. He's another guy that's heating up in time for the playoffs. And I think, honestly, I could see the same thing happening to Rangers, some of your top guys, Panarin, Ryder, those guys, your your top guys, I could see them really like, you know, let's keep our division uh, hopes alive and them going off, having a big game. And depending on ah, how the goal scoring or how the goaltending does, excuse me, for the Hurricanes in this game, that I think that's the biggest question mark heading into this game. Like, are we going to have Antti Are we going to have Fred Davis? 
are we going to be rolling with Yoder in this game? So, you know, he has been really, really good. Uh, I think he's still trying to get the feel of the NHL, you know, because he's used to KHL and AHL hockey. And NHL is a big step up. I think he's still getting the feel for it. And I think you know, going against a team like the Rangers would be a very, very, very big test for him. And I think he is fully capable of doing it. Don't get me wrong there, but I think that would be the biggest question here of who we have in net and how the game will go. I definitely could see a high scoring game for this one, but I could also see a low scoring game if both goalies are on because we got Igor Shesterkin, who wouldn't surprise me if he wins the Vesna this year. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, Igor's going to have a big game. And one thing about this Ranger team that I've really liked all season is, you know, they tend to bounce back from tough losses. And not that they played, like, terribly against the Bruins, but the Bruins clearly outplayed them, beat them 3-1 to one on uh, Saturday. So I think the Rangers come back with a, a strong effort at home. It's tough to predict this game because I don't know how many of the injured Ranger players are going to get back into the lineup. Yeah. But I'll say this. Cap and – or, excuse me, Cop, Kako, and Heedle – if two of those three guys play, I'm going to take the Rangers to win the game three to two. If, mm-hmm. if, if not two out of those three guys play, then I, I think the Canes win it by the same score three to two. I think it's going to come down to, to that maybe. Um, yeah. Cause you know, the Rangers, they were without all three of those guys against the Bruins and uh, it definitely showed at times, I think for sure. Yeah. I could definitely see that being the final score. Uh, yeah. I really don't see either team scoring more than five goals, honestly. Uh, and I think the only way that happens is if it's like an empty net, honestly, at that point, uh, because I feel that these two teams, I hate their top guys that do play uh, because we're both dealing with injuries right now. I feel if top guys play, that's going to drive the score up. The more top guys that play, the higher the score is going to be. Uh, but then again, you're playing – against one of the league's top defenses with Carolina. You're uh, going against a 50-goal scorer with uh, Chris Kreider and a Vesna candidate, or, well, two Vesna candidates if Freddie Anderson plays. But this is going to be a, a heck of a game for sure. It, it's going to be one. It's hard to predict, honestly. It, I think the only thing that you can say for sure with this one is that it's going to be must-watch hockey. I think so too. And you know, both these teams are going to be geared up and ready to go with, with the playoffs being as close as they are right now. But uh, yeah, I mean, I figure we can, uh, we can call it there, but if we get, you know, maybe a round two matchup, Jared, I mean, I would love to do a couple more crossovers with you as long as you're up for it, man. Of course, of course. All right. So uh, Ranger fans, Canes fans, thank you guys for tuning in and we will see you next time.